Japanese Bank Heist The most perfect bank robbery in Japanese history Tokyo, December 10th, 1968 It was a cold and rainy winter's day in the capital A fitting backdrop for what would become the biggest bank robbery in Japanese history Apart from being dark, rainy and gloomy It was an ordinary day Unless you were the manager of the Nippon Trust Bank He was on edge Over the last few weeks Someone had been sending anonymous letters to his house, threatening to blow up his home if he didn't meet their 300 million yen demand. He had already expressed his concerns to his staff and to the police, who assured him that they'd be keeping a close eye on his house and on the bank itself. Despite his concerns, it was business as usual for the bank, and so they were preparing to make an important trip to the Toshiba factory in Fuchu, which was only a short distance away, where they'd be making a 294 million yen delivery of the staff's yearly bonuses. And so four bank employees got into a company car with a boot full of metal boxes loaded with money and began the short journey to the Toshiba factory. Everything ran smoothly until, only 200 meters away from their destination, they got pulled over by a policeman on a police motorcycle. He informed them that the bank manager's house had just been blown up and that the car they were in may have been planted with dynamite. He of course needed to check the car to make sure it was safe for them to continue their business. The four employees quickly got out of the car and waited next to it while the police officer inspected it. All of a sudden, one of the employees noticed smoke coming out from underneath the vehicle. The policemen shouted for them to take cover behind the nearby wall, only a few meters away. They ran for cover and sat behind it, waiting for the explosion. Waiting, waiting, waiting. After a minute or so, one of the employees looked over to see what was going on, except what he saw was nothing. The company car was gone and so was the policeman. Trying to make sense of everything, they went to a nearby payphone to call the bank. The manager answered the phone, and they were shocked when he told them that everything at the bank was normal. In fact, his house hadn't been blown up, and everyone was safe. It finally dawned on them. They were victims of the perfect heist. You see, the police officer that pulled them over wasn't an officer at all. What had just happened was something the perpetrator had planned for months. Disguised as a police officer, he had just stolen what was supposed to be the bonus payments of 523 Toshiba employees, 294 million yen in total, which was around $6 million, almost exactly the amount he had asked for. All that was left behind was a flare, which he had ignited to trick the employees into thinking their car was on fire, and some other items, which he purposely left behind to mislead investigators. It worked, because over half a century later, the 300 million yen robbery remains unsolved. It's hard to refer to a crime as being perfect, but as far as crimes go, this one was as close to perfection as possible. There was no physical violence involved, no loss of life, and most likely only one perpetrator. There was no damaged property, and the stolen money was insured. The Toshiba employees got their bonuses, and the culprit rode off into the sunset, nameless and 300 million yen richer than he was just hours before. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, it's completely free and it helps the channel out a ton.